All right, today we're looking at four or five, which is completing the square. It is another method we use to solve quadratic equations. And completing the square actually works universally uh, among your quadratic equations. The other methods we have looked at thus far are factoring. That was section four, three. And factoring works really well if you have integer or rational answers. If it's if your answers are not rational or integers, factoring is not going to work. Okay. Um, then we delved into graphing, all right, and looking for those x-intercepts to find our solution. Some worked out nicely. Some were some what appeared to be rational or irrational answers. Uh, the next two properties we're going to look at are square roots and what's called completing the square. All right. Yay. Um, again, this process works for all answers, real, imaginary, complex, irrational, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. The one catches with completing the square is we need to kind of hone in on our perfect squares. All right. So the first thing we're going to look at are some um, easier problems that are set up as perfect square triangles. So when I look at example one, we have x squared plus 8x plus 16. I notice that if I can factor that left-hand side. That is a perfect square trinomial. I can factor it as x plus 4 squared. Again, it was a perfect square trinomial, so I can factor it as a square of a binomial. Okay. At this stage, we can then use square roots to solve. So we wind up with x plus 4 equals plus or minus 7, which means our two answers are negative 11 or 3. Okay. We can do the same thing on B. I notice, again, that the left-hand side is a perfect square trinomial. It factors into x minus 12 squared. And if you guys aren't seeing that, you could obviously go through that factoring process again, but you would inevitably come to the conclusion that your two factors are x minus 12 and x minus 12. All right. After we factor, we can use square roots to solve. So we wind up with x minus 12 on the left-hand side. Keep in mind, 20 is 4 times 5. So as I reduce that radical, I get plus or minus 2 root 5. Bring the 12 over to the right-hand side. So I wind up with 12 plus or minus 2 root 5. Some of you are probably saying, you know, yeah, I can totally see that. That works out really well, except what happens if that left-hand side is not a perfect square triangle? And that's actually what we're going to look at today, completing the square. So the first part of your assignment is going to be problems that are set up very nicely as perfect square triangles, and then you're going to use the square roots to simplify. But the question is, what if we don't have a perfect square triangle? Is there a way to make it a perfect square trinomial? Is there a way to come up with this number so that it factors as a perfect square? And if you notice, if we go back to the problems here as well, see how those numbers relate. Our C is always half of B squared. And that's what's the important piece of the day. All right, we want to come up with a C value such that it's half of B squared. If I come up with that C value that works, then I can factor it as a perfect square. All right, so to kind of ease into things, we're going to start with just some expressions to come up with a C value. So the question is, what's half of B squared? Half of 14 is 7. 7 squared is 49. This expression will then factor into x plus 7 squared. It works just as well with fractions, okay? So half of b squared is 9 fourths. I would encourage you guys to leave your answer today as a fraction, okay? It's going to be a lot easier than using decimals. And then like I said before, or like you may have noticed rather before, 
when we factor the expression, it's whatever we took half of goes in that expression. All right. So we wind up with x plus 3 halves squared, just like on the first one, we wound up with x plus 7 squared. Notice both of those situations, b value is positive. So when we factored, our binomial was a sum. If b is negative, all right, we're taking half of b, squaring it. We wind up with 2, 25 over 4. 15 over 2 squared. 15 squared is 225. 2 squared is 4. So that's my new c value. In my expression, since b is negative, I am subtracting 15 halves. Whoops. It's not an equation, so there's no equal sign there. But it's x minus 15 halves squared. So if you recall back to factoring, if I wanted to expand back to the beginning, square the first term, which is x squared, square the last term, which is 225 over 4, and then multiply a and b, which is 15 halves, and double it. Negative 30 halves is negative 15. So it does work out. Again, remember your c value should always be half of b squared. Now we're actually going to put this into context of solving a quadratic equation. Notice on the first one, 24 is not a perfect square. So this the C value here does not work, okay? So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get rid of it, okay? I notice my leading coefficient is one, which is a good start. If it wasn't, I would have to divide everything to make it be a one, okay? So at this stage, like I said before, the 24 isn't working. So I'm gonna move it over to the other side. And I wanna come up with a C value that works. Well, remember our C value is always half of B squared, half of 10 squared is 25. If I do something to the right side or left side of my equation, I also have to do it to the right side. And this is going to be the step you guys forget. Okay, make sure you keep your equation balanced and do it to both sides of your equation. All right, so we now factor the left hand side again, we squared negative 5 to get 25. So that's how that expression factors negative 24 plus 25 is 1. We then can solve for x. So we use square roots both sides. We wind up with x minus 5 equals plus or minus 1. 5 plus or minus 1, which means our answers are 4 and 6. Notice at this stage we got two integer answers. I could have probably factored the initial expression, but the directions did say solve by completing the square. So I do want to show you that completing the square does work universally among all problems, whether they be real, complex, imaginary, irrational, etc., completing the square is a method that will always work, okay? Looking at this next one, again, our leading coefficient is one, so we're good there. Our C value does not work, so I'm going to get rid of it, and I'm going to move it over to the other side. I need to come up with a new C, half of B, so half of B squared, is nine. So I'm going to add nine to both sides of my equation. Then I can factor and solve. So at this stage, I'm going to square it both sides. Hopefully, you guys remember from last section, square root of negative 16 is plus or minus 4i. Then we bring the 3 over. There are my two answers to this quadratic equation. Again, to kind of give you a visual, if I were to graph this question, x squared minus 6x plus 25, it would not cross the x-axis. Again, reason being, we have two imaginary answers. Those are you know, situations where your parabola does not touch the x-axis. All right, very last problem here. Uh, again, looking at the first step, we wanna make sure our leading coefficient is one. It's not one in this case. So I'm going to divide by 3. I get x squared plus 10 thirds x. And I'm going to move the 8 thirds over to the other side because I already know it's not going to work. All right. I want to come up with my new c value. Okay. And actually, before we go on, again, make sure your leading coefficient is 1 to start. If it's not, the completing the square process is going to be a little more challenging for you. 
Okay. So divide everything by three first to start. Now we can come up with our new C value. Remember it's half of B squared. This looks a little confusing, but 10 thirds divided by two is 10 over six. 10 over six is five thirds. Five thirds squared is 25 ninths. Okay. If I add something to the right side, I have to add it to the left side. And then we can factor as a perfect square. The perfect square is x plus 5 thirds squared. The right-hand side we'll have to do a little modification with because we have different denominators. So we get a common denominator of 9. Multiply by 3. Multiply the top by 3. So we wind up with 24 ninths is the same as 8 thirds. When I add 24 ninths to 25 ninths, I get 49 ninths then we can square root to solve notice hopefully you recall from before i said leave your answer as fractions most of these problems do work out nicely so like i said before leave your answer in terms of a fraction it's going to save you a little headache we move the five thirds over and then we just have to solve negative five minus seven is negative 12 thirds is negative four Negative 5 plus 7 is 2 thirds. Again, this would be another expression we can factor. Uh, we do get rational answers. Your intercepts would be at negative 4 and positive 2 thirds. Again, completing the square is a process that works for every quadratic equation. The key in this is number one, make sure your leading coefficient is 1. And then number two, create a new c value that's always half of b squared. All right, if you do those two steps, the process and algebra should fall into place from there. Let me know if you have any questions. I'm available via live feed and discussion board. Your homework's on the bottom. Again, make sure you give exact answers from here on out on these questions. No rounded decimals, AKA you can't cheat and use your calculator. Haha. <laughs> Enjoy. Let me know if you have any questions.